and welcome to the What Mommy Loves podcast with me, your amiable host, Azinma. For today's topic, we're going to be talking about baby and toddler sleep training strategies. When it comes to sleep training babies, the various methods of sleep training babies, but the most popular ones are the cried out method, the fading method, and also the no tears method. For the cried out method, the child will be put into their cot or their crib awake. And so, of course, you know, babies, babies are normally usually attached to whoever is with them, maybe their mom or a parent or a guardian. And so you put the baby down and allow them to you know, self-soothe themselves to sleep. And this involves a lot of tears because the baby will be crying and you just have to, you know, be strong not to intervene with the process and just allow them to, you know, learn the skill of self-soothing until they master it and then they can fall asleep by themselves without your intervention. This method could be distressing for the baby and the parent and it could make the child feel abandoned. Next method is the faded method, which is more of a gradual transition for the child. So this method is a lot gentler than the cried out method because the parent will get to you know rock the child, soothe the child to sleep gently. And then when the child is like halfway to sleep, then they put the child in the cot to self-soothe and then sleep off. And um, this method is a lot gentler than the cried out method. This method, over several nights, the child will learn to self-soothe and sleep by themselves. However, there could be challenges with this method because everything has got its pros and cons. Well, the con of this method is that it may prolong the sleep training process and also confuse the baby. The third approach is the no tears method. And this method is all about, you know, comforting the child, cuddling the child. The parent is actively present in sleep training the child. So this approach is gentle until they finally become independent in getting to sleep by themselves. While the con is that it will take longer to achieve your desired result and it will require a lot of patience and for you to be consistent in maintaining this strategy. Now, to me personally, there is no right or wrong process um, because each one of them has their pros and their cons. Every individual is different and every baby is different. Every child is different. So what works for one person might not work for the other. And with parenting, you have to try various things and it's all about trial and error. One day you might want to try the cried out method. If it works, fine for you. If it doesn't work, you could move to the fading method. If that one works as well, you know, perfect. If it doesn't work, you can move to the no tears method. So I've got two adorable kids here. I've got a girl and a boy. And with my two kids, their sleep training strategy was different. My girl was more, you know, independent. And my girl is the first born here and naturally, I had to try out all methods really. So I tried out the cry it out method and you know, the first day we tried it out, it, it, it was a challenge the first day, but then with the second day, we tried the fading method and the fading method was, you know, more soothing for her. By the third day, she was able to soothe herself to sleep. And it was such a success because this was something that from the first day it was a challenge but then by day three you know she got the hang of it so for my son the cried out method and the fading method did not work for him because he was more of an attached child he was one of those kids that you know really loved his mom's company what i had to do for that situation was to try the no tears method and we tried it for a few times to be fair the no tears method was the one that worked for him. However, due to this method, I feel like he did not have the opportunity to cry and then fall asleep deeply because sometimes when babies cry themselves to sleep, they enter into a deep sleep, which is one of the, you know, the sleep cycles for babies. Um, so the sleep cycles for babies is the light sleep, the deep sleep, and then the dream time. So 
With the cried out method and the fading method, sometimes the babies will have uninterrupted sleep, which means that they have fallen into the deep sleep. But with the no tears method, my own son had more of light sleep most days because he didn't have the opportunity to cry and so you know he was always alert like you literally have to crawl out of the room and be super silent if not you'll wake the baby up so yeah so those are you know the differences between each of these methods and it's just for you to explore them try them out see which one works for you and your baby another thing with parenting is that you can have a hybrid approach to things so you don't have to stick to one method you can try all three you can mix and match and just shake things up so after establishing your baby sleep training strategy the next phase is the toddler sleep training strategy and with this one it's challenging for parents in the sense that your child is a lot bigger they're toddlers and you know how toddlers are they love to explore they love to test boundaries sometimes they may have separation anxiety or even have a newfound level of independence you know and um, as they say the terrible twos so imagine sleep training a two-year-old it is a different ball game but there are strategies that can help support you and support your child. One of the strategies is for you to establish a consistent bedtime routine. A consistent bedtime routine signals to your toddler that it's time to wind down and prepare for sleep. You can stick to activities each night such as having regular bath times and um, reading to your baby, reading a storybook to your baby before bed and also having cuddle time. And the key word there is consistency because if you fall out of the routine, your toddler will fall out as well and it just goes into disarray which then makes it a lot more challenging. So having a consistent bedtime routine is ideal you can also communicate with your child in a clear age appropriate manner so that they know that at a certain time you know this is what they need to look out for they would know that these are the signals for bedtime provide comfort and reassurance especially if they have fears or anxiety at night another thing to do is to encourage independence simple things like allowing them wear their pajamas or allowing them pick the book that they want you to read to them you know these type of things fosters independence ensure that the room is sleep ready in the sense that the room is conducive for sleeping um, create you know a calming atmosphere for for the child so if your child likes you know dim lights um, lullabies in the background as they sleep you create that atmosphere for your children so my children they loved their starry lights we had this um kind of starry light which just helped calm them to sleep you can also play some lullabies to help soothe them to sleep Another thing to try to do before bedtime is to ensure that they have a screen free period before bedtime. So this just helps them settle down. It helps, you know, their body to regulate itself, to know just when it's time to sleep. And also you just have to, you know, be patient, consistent. However, if you've got any challenges or if you feel like the process is just beyond you, be sure to seek professional help. So when it comes to sleep training babies and toddlers, we can't ignore the elephant in the room, which is sleep regression. And sleep regression is just about disruptions to a baby or a toddler's sleep patterns. We can look at it as a glitch in the matrix of a child's sleep pattern. And um, this is something that is disruptive. It's something challenging. It affects the parents, it affects the child. It happens in phases and it just involves increased night waking for your child, interrupted sleep patterns and shorter naps. It's temporary, so it's not permanent and it just signifies you know, that your child is going through a developmental leap. There are various phases of the sleep regression. There's the one to four month sleep regression. 
There's the eight to 10 month sleep regression, the 18 months sleep regression, the two year sleep regression, and also the three year sleep regression. So it happens in stages and this is what you need to look out for in the different stages. So the four month sleep regression that happens with babies, you would notice that your baby has frequent wakings at night um, and they will also struggle to fall asleep during their regular nap times and this just means that your baby is having increased alertness improved motor skills and changes in their sleep cycles for the eight to ten month sleep regression this is usually the time when your baby starts to teeth and so with this phase um, they start to experience sleep regression they also begin to wake up at night their nap time changes as well during this phase they might be experiencing separation anxiety discomfort due to teething or they might you know be crawling at this at this time or pulling themselves up to stand so for the 18 month sleep regression the developmental leap in this phase is when the child starts to have improved language skills increased imagination and growing independence so they tend to be walkers at this time and for the two year sleep regression this is usually when your toddler moves from a crib from a baby crib to a toddler bed so this is a lovely transitioning time for your toddler at this time the developmental leap for them is for them to have cognitive and emotional development this is usually the time when they start to potty train they have increased assertiveness for the kind of things that they like and what they don't want um so yeah this is interesting time for them my daughter was potty trained when she was two and you know this was interesting because with the sleep regression I knew it was time for us to start potty training her my son he was potty trained um, just before he turned four so he was about three three years old ish when he was potty trained but it was just before he started to turn four like one to two months before he turned four finally for the three year sleep regression this is usually influenced by them transitioning into starting school so having lots of social interactions with you know the teachers and other children in the school uh, when they stay up at night maybe they're excited about starting school or maybe they feel anxious about starting school so due to this it influences the sleep regression at age three I would say the key strategy here to manage sleep regressions is to be consistent with your bedtime routine and of course with every um, phase of sleep regression you have to change your bedtime routine and with these changes you need to be consistent with them so offer cuddles as much as possible you know stick to your bath times you read a book if your child fancies that um, encourage lullabies you can play lullabies in the background you know for your child if that is going to help soothe them to sleep and um, just be patient be patient through this whole process um, it is all what it and it's something that every child goes through so you're not alone do not feel like it's just you going through this it's not an issue it's not a problem it's just a phase and it will pass so let's explore nighttime waking because nighttime waking is something that will happen throughout your child's life really it happens once in a while throughout your child's life we we as adults we also have some times where we have nighttime wakings and it could be due to nightmares or you know maybe for some reason you just have to wake up at night you know or you want to use the toilet at night so there are different reasons that makes anyone wake up at night but with babies and toddlers it could be a challenge especially if you're struggling to establish sleep training Sometimes you might put your child to sleep in their room and then they find themselves in your bedroom. Sometimes I'll just allow them stay in my bed because to be fair, I enjoyed those cuddles from them. So even things like extending nighttime sleep intervals is also something that I was able to explore when my kids were toddlers. It's also important to establish day and night differentiation. 
If a child is the type of child that if they sleep at a certain time in the evening, it will be a struggle for them to sleep at night, you might want to skip that evening sleep. So this type of thing happens to older toddlers. So it's just for you to be able to communicate with your child to let them know that there is day to night sleep differentiation. Now that we've been able to identify the strategies for baby and toddler sleep training, we need to also involve partners into this because partners have a role to play in making this a success or a failure. So always speak to your partner about it. And it's also a lovely bonding experience for both partners and for the child. When both partners are involved, it establishes consistency because everyone is working towards the same goal to have a well-rested and happy baby or toddler. It also promotes support and encouragement whereby both of you support each other. So if one person is unavailable to sleep train for the night, the other person supports and takes over. It promotes communication and shared decision making. So if one person thinks that a particular strategy is not working for their child, you know, you can both decide to change it or look for new ways to improve on the strategy and involving your partner builds self-confidence in both yourself and your partner it then helps you know that this is something that you are capable of doing and doing well and it just promotes a a perfect bonding opportunity for the whole family that's everything for this podcast today we've been able to uncover you know baby and toddler sleep training strategies it's been exciting having you guys with me on today's podcast i hope you all have enjoyed this be sure to like comment review share um follow subscribe to my podcast and youtube channels um also follow me on instagram and all of the social media platforms i'm excited for where this podcast is headed this is just a podcast for us to chill and relax and learn and i'm so excited to be able to share my own experiences with you in each of the episodes if you would like to share your experiences or if you would like to you know share your tips or if you have any questions be free to dm me at what mommy loves on instagram or you can send me an email at what mommy loves number two at gmail.com so what mommy loves to the number two at gmail.com and I'll be happy to respond to any of your questions or tips or experiences. I want us to be able to share and care for each other to build this community of what mommy loves because mothers have things that they love, things that they are happy about. I want this platform to be a positive place for us moms to just get to unwind and feel free to share and learn. So yeah, I will see you all in the next episode. Be sure to enjoy your parenting journey. Take it one step at a time and also enjoy all of the cuddles because your little ones will grow so fast. And so it's important for you to take lots of pictures, spend a lot of time bonding with your little one and enjoy the moment. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Stay safe and be blessed. Bye. But I went